Good afternoon traders and welcome to this week's weekly market analysis class, Monday the 22nd of January. As always, please understand that any advice in today's session is of a general nature only and that your personal circumstances have not been taken into consideration. Okay, let's have a look at, uh, I'll put this forward, the major announcements and data that is due to be released today, but let's have a little bit of talk about the market, what's been happening, what is happening and what could uh, possibly move the markets uh, the most significant uh, in most significant way this week uh, last week uh, from the US as you may or may not be aware the US government went into a shutdown uh, on Friday after the Senate failed to strike a deal uh, to break an impasse uh, we have not seen a shutdown in uh, since for about four years so it is a big thing um, investor sentiments to the situation was pretty much evident uh, all of last week leading into the the situation that was being predicted that it could happen and actually did happen um, we basically saw the US dollar index have its fifth consecutive uh, sort of a decline week for the start of the year uh, at the moment the US uh, we still the basically uh, they will Europe and North America will be waking up shortly so let's see how long the situation will last and if maybe a quick resolution can be had and put a bit more confidence back in that US dollar also over the weekend from the euro particularly in Germany we had social Democrats uh, Democrats vote on forming a, a coalition with Angela Merkel's government and for now is a step closer uh, it has not reached the final agreement as yet um, but it's a positive sign also for the euro this particular week uh, we have uh, monetary policies which are due uh, let me just show you that uh, where is it on a Thursday and monetary policies are due and uh, essentially what we're looking for, or what investors are really looking for, or what's best for the economy is if we see Mr. Draghi indicate that there will be no increase in rates, at least until uh, the quantitative easing programs have ended. So that's sort of what we're looking for. Let's wait and see what actually develops and happens. That's on Thursday. I'm indicating the times there for you. I jumped the gun a little moment before from Japan. We also have another central bank which is making a monetary policy statement. Um, and that happens uh, tomorrow, uh, our time, and also on uh, wee hours of Friday morning or Saturday morning, Friday night, should I say, uh, we have Mr. Crowder will be speaking as well. Other major events that are happening this week are from the UK. Uh, we saw uh, last week the UK basically hit a bit of a, uh, a roof or a resistance and it has pulled back. Um, we do have average earnings uh, coming out on Wednesday and GDP numbers uh, for Friday. Mr. Carney will be speaking uh, late, late Friday night, Saturday morning. So let's see what that data is and how it uh, compares to what's been happening, whether the, the pound continues its uh, strong run or, or starts to make a little bit of a correction. From the US, I've already mentioned that the big one is let's wait and see when the government, when people wake up today, let's see what happens in the government uh, with the resolutions of their issues. Um, that is a big one. For the US, we also have, in terms of data, we have GDP numbers and durable goods at the end of the week, late Friday night, crude oil inventories mid uh, on Thursday, Thursday morning. That's from the US and that pretty much uh, is the, the highlights of the data that is coming out. I believe this week the pair that will be the most volatile and not just, uh, actually there's not much direct data released, but just because of the geopolitical situation that's happening with uh, one from the Europe, Germany situation still not uh, settled. Also, we have monetary and central bank uh, statements and decisions to come out. From the US side, we have the geopolitical situation with the government shutdown. So the EURUSD is probably going to be the most volatile pair in terms of 
uh, 10 situations and negotiations. Keep that on your calendar. The times that I'm showing you guys on my screen are in my local time, which is Australian Eastern Standard Daylight Savings Time. Our own Aussie dollar, just a, a little mention. Well, our own Aussie dollar has been going very, very strong. Um, there's not much in terms of data that will affect us this particular week. So it's a week that it's a little bit more on the quiet side. Um, I believe that we could, depending on what happens, of course, if I, if I specifically talk about Aussie US dollar, depending on what happens with the US situation, we could see a, uh, an AUD, USD correction uh, occur in the markets. All right, let me bring forward my charts. And we shall have a look at uh, the majors, see what's happening, and we'll kick it off for the week. If you do have any questions, by the way, if there's any new faces in the room, please feel free to type them at any stage. Whether they're off topic or not, I will try and squeeze them in and uh, relate it to our analysis. Okay, Aussie dollar, here we go. You can see what I was just mentioning. Aussie dollar has been basically one-way traffic probably from just before Christmas, it hasn't really had any type of a correction at all. And now we are approaching a critical level that I have already highlighted that resistance or possible resistance. And the uh, Friday's candle, incidentally, which is, uh, let me just zoom in on it a bit better so everybody can see it. Friday's candle, which is kind of like the, the pin, like this has got the long tail. It's usually a candle which indicates ex exhaustion in the market. Also, it's in red, which basically means the market opened at this level, pushed towards some height, but then eventually got squeezed and ended up closing lower than where it started. This type of candle can signify exhaustion on its own. It's not a good enough reason to, to take a trade. Uh, naturally, what I'm looking for right now is I am looking for some kind of price action reversal pattern here. Ideally, it would have come in the form of, you know, if I had that candle as such and then I had an inside candle to that, then the following day I could have had it in this format. That would have been ideally what I wanted. That can no longer happen because today's candle has already taken out the low of yesterday's. But what I can do, there's a couple of options here. If we're trading strictly the day chart, then wait. Wait for today's candle to finish, and let's have a look at tomorrow's candle, and we could get a setup by Wednesday. Okay, the only danger in that is that today's candle could actually finish something like this as a red candle, and you've already missed some of the run. Okay, that's okay. If you're, you, this is a time that you need to consult with your trading plan. If your trading plan says that you trade a daily chart, then you've got to stick to your guns and stay on a daily chart. Okay, uh, on the daily call, the other, I think it was on Friday, there was a situation identical to this. I just took the trade because I wanted to. I took it on a four hour chart instead of a daily chart. I got stopped out on that trade. Okay, um, and this is one such example of where you've got to make a decision. And what I would suggest first is make the decision when you're writing your plan and then just follow whatever your plan says. For those of you who it's okay to trade on a four hour candle let me zoom in and let's have a look at what the four hour candle is saying okay luckily for us the four hour candle is saying nothing you could maybe have justified this as a body engulfing it's not the prettiest looking thing so I would I'm gonna say nothing so that makes it easy for everybody so there's nothing happening here so let's put this on your hot list we are at a crucial point in the chart also psychologically we've shot through the 80 zone probably taken out a whole bunch of stops so it's a fresh market let's see what it spits out for us okay if anybody has any questions on this just type them in i'll move on to the euro usd okay let me zoom out a little bit <clears throat> take a, f a f look from further away i just want to really see this chart Okay, the little line that I've left on my chart, that little line there, was from last week. As I suggested, wait for the market to go up, pull back down, 
and then shoot the trade into this direction if we get price action situation at that particular point in time. Now, that didn't happen last week, and what I'm going to do is because there is nothing, there is no, there's a big empty pocket all the way up here. And the way I know that is when I zoom out of the chart, look at this. When I zoom out of the chart, we can see that there hasn't been any price activity in this area for a long, long time. Basically, what happened was the market just shot straight down, and now it's been buoyed for so long, so I cannot use, there's no levels that I could leverage off. So what I am, the only option that I have is I have to wait for it to pull back. I believe that it could be in an uptrend and then shoot up. So I'm waiting for these types of trades and then shoot, shoot up, okay? Uh, Karen, is your question related to the Euro USD or the Aussie AUD? Can you just clarify for me? Okay, so for this particular one, what I've got to do is I've got to wait. Hopefully, I get a nice price action set up, and then I can look for that as such. Okay, all right. Karen's asking me, is this a bit of a flag setup? Okay, on a daily. Okay, so for those of you who don't know the flag type of trade, let me just draw in this section over here. The market normally could be doing something like this, and then it goes like that, and then it might go like this, and then continue to shoot up. In essence, creating what we call here it looks like a bit of a flag. So Karen is asking me, is this a bit of a flag? Now, it, it kind of looks like it a little bit. I just don't think the pole, the pole, this part here is long enough, but let me see what it looks like on a four hour chart. Give me one second. On the four hour chart, it looks a little bit better. Um, but look, I'm going to say no. Uh, I wouldn't be prepared to trade that one uh, as a flag pattern. It's, it's close, but it's not quite. Uh, on if it was a if it had poked through if this pole was a lot longer and all this activity was say up here and it was like that then I would like it a little bit better okay but uh, well spotted uh, I, I don't believe it's it's one exactly okay so our euro USD plan is I'm just going to grab this line and keep it here because when I look back on my charts you should use these little tricks for yourself that reminds me of what I'm looking for. Okay, sometimes I look at a chart and uh, I may not see exactly, especially when I'm when I was newer to trading. So that little line just quickly jolts my mind that I'm actually looking for a pullback so that I can trade in that direction there. Okay, let's have a look at the GBP USD. Okay, last week we we were trying to trade a, a triple top or something. Did we trade it, guys? Can anybody remind me? Did we take the trade or did we not take the trade or what happened? It was based on a four hour. Or, and we were trying to get the third one there. Paul, we did, we did get an entry? Oh, no. Okay. So, yes, we tried, we were waiting for it, but we didn't get the setup. And this is a, actually a really good example of price action uh, protecting us. So, let me zoom in to the situation that we were in last week. Last week, we were over here somewhere. At the time, this candle was in there somewhere, and everything this way did not exist. Okay, so we've got the benefit of seeing what happened, but last week we didn't have the benefit of seeing what happened. And if you want, you can go to my website and you can look at this little section of the video and you'll see that everything over here was not on our chart. So at the time, this candle here was an inside candle and we said, let's see if it breaks this way or something like that. I can't remember exactly. And consequently, what happened was it didn't happen. It just broke the other way. So what it meant was that there was no trade and we just moved on. So we didn't get hurt by it. Um, and although it looked like a really good 
set up at the time because we had one touch, two touches, and we were on our third. If we simply traded off the level, we would have got stopped out. But we waited for price action confirmation. It never came, so we never entered the trade. Okay, so let me see what's happening now. Go to our daily. Let me zoom out again. I want to see it a bit better. <clears throat> the only thing that I can see is that level there. But it doesn't really have a lot of history. Let me look for a, for a Fibonacci uh, extension. I'm not willing to trade just off. Oh, what do you guys think? Let's. I, I want to hear your opinion. So what I'm looking at here is I'm noticing that previous level where the market came and settled and then until it shot through, okay? Um, and now we're at that same level again and we're wondering will it act as a little bit of resistance what do we think? Do we like it? Do you think that's uh, worthy of possibly entering a trade or not? If you if you don't know because you're too new or just don't know, just type in a question mark. Okay. If not, just give me a B, a yes for yes or an N for no. I just want to see what your opinions are. It also gives me an idea of what the newer people in the room experience levels and just the psychological sort of risk appetite as well okay so just just to give you an idea I've got roughly 10% saying yes everybody else saying no okay let me have a, a little look Okay, I'm going to say no as well, uh, but I'm just going to keep the line there. So I'm just going to keep it. So th probably the best probability type trade here will be to come back down and look for the entry there. And I think Karen is telling me to look for a trade to bounce off this line. Okay, so... Think. So if it comes down and we get price action right here, we're bouncing off this line which has previously acted as support. In any case, it would be um, still a trend type situation. So when I'm trying to trade trend, whether I use that support line or if I draw a different one, sorry, if I draw a different one, say so something like that it doesn't really or even if this shoots up goes through that and then comes and I trade it off this line there there's still all those trades are still what, what I would say is a, a trend based trade so that all, would all be valid okay so in essence I'll just get rid of this line because it failed and, and I didn't use it so what I'm looking for is waiting for the market to pull back when it does then I'll look for price action to go into the trade now I don't know when it will pull back this could continue to go up there and then eventually pull back on this line which would give me a, a little bit of a, a nicer warm warm fuzzy feeling about the trade okay so there you have it that's my GBP USD there's nothing on it right right now let's have a look at gold gold got very close to this double top situation that we highlighted last week it's pulled back I believe it's still on the card so let's see what happens should this rise to that level I'm still going to be looking for this trade in this direction other than that uh, there was nothing there and if it was I missed it so it's, it's no dramas so that's it. Yeah, gold, pretty straightforward. What I'm going to do is just extend this a little bit more to the left so that I can keep monitoring it. Okay, so what we're looking for is wait, see if the market reaches that, gives me the price action 
situation that I'm looking for in that region and then I will be looking to uh, try and trade a bit of a, a double top okay because we we don't know if it's a double top until it actually retraces waiting for price action becomes much 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 more significant okay so don't trade just off the level because if you're trading off the level we don't know if this is going to be a double top this could just continue to go up and then we'd be looking back on this chart uh, with egg on our face okay so that's why if, if you're going to do a double top or a double bottom definitely 100% you need to wait for the price action confirmation reversal okay question about the Aussie yen I'll have a look at that once I've covered the majors US yen now okay Oh, this was a chart that really, really annoyed me. We came right down to there and we didn't get the the price action, so we took no trade, okay? Uh, it looks like we may come down again. I'm not sure. Uh, I get the feeling that we may move forward more than down, but either way, I've got nothing to trade this on, so I just have to look at it, watch it, and do nothing. Okay, USCN. If it does come down to meet this line, well then of course we're going to look for that that trade again. If it does come into this section, as I've said, then I will look for that trade. But uh, I'm not going to trade just the level. I do want to find some kind of price action reversal. Okay. Um, what you can do if you desperately like the pattern, you can drop in a time zone to say I'm I'm on a daily chart right now. But I could drop into, say, a four-hour chart to try and, and squeeze the trade out, okay? Let's have a look at the Euro-Yen. Aha. Euro-Yen is going to be a pretty volatile one this week as well, guys. We've got both their central banks are making uh, interest rate decisions and monetary policy statements. So this one could uh, come out of this tight compression. Um, either way, I don't have any setups anywhere here. Now, what I really need to wait here is either to clear that, okay, or to clear this. So one of the two, until I get out of those areas, I don't really want to trade this one, okay? So I'm just going to leave it alone. Kiwi dollar, Kiwi dollar, <clears throat> very highly correlated to the Aussie dollar, moving very, very similar. Let me zoom out a little. Let me have a, a look from further away. With the Kiwi dollar, I'm not really wanting to trade that level. I don't feel that this is a significant level. This one here is a significant level. This one's more of a minor. So to try and trade that in this direction is something that I would not want to do. Okay, just in case anybody was thinking that, just I'm just voicing out what I'm thinking in my own head. The only type of trade that I that I would consider here would be a continuation of trend, which would be like that. That's not on the cards right now either. Right now either. So I just need to wait for the market to move away from this area, and let's see what it reveals for us. So Kiwi dollar this week, nothing again. Jeez, the charts aren't being very helpful for me today. Let me zoom out. Oil, WTI. Okay, I noticed already that that level is higher than that, so we have broken into fresh territory. We can also see that uh, there's no, there hasn't been price activity in recent times. Uh, in fact, this level here is roughly about September 2014. Okay. You can see from my chart here, so it's been a while since we've been into this area. Um, usually means there's not many orders 
uh, in there, so I can't, there's no resistances, there's no support lines, uh, there's nothing I can usually use to try and navigate my way around. So let me zoom in. All I have essentially right now is just one way, pretty much one way traffic. The logical kind of trade suggests that, you know, when in trend, continue with the trend. So it would be just wait for the pullbacks and then just keep keep hitting it okay eventually it will break uh, and we get stopped out but uh, you know they say when in trend continue so that's all I can think of here there's nothing else available on this particular chart for us that's oil finally let me have a look at our Aussie 200 ASX 200 let me just, before I analyze this chart, I just want to quickly see what other index markets have done because I know the S&P was going really, really well and I want to see what it did on Friday. Okay, just what as I thought. All right, so this is the S&P 500. That's just one-way traffic. That is massive, massive, massive momentum. Even you can see the, C, the CCI levels here. They're huge. That's just signal of strength. It's just one-way traffic, okay? But uh, I just want to see a couple of others. Let me have a look at the DAX. The DAX is, is hit a, a headspace, and it has wobbled a little bit. And I just want to see the NASDAQ. NASDAQ as well. So the US stock market is going really, really strong. In Europe, the FTSE relatively has had a little bit of a pullback. The, the German uh, index is, is kind of a little bit sideways, and our Aussie has really more. We didn't have that huge, huge run. We had a lot of noise. We pushed up, and then we've basically been just shot back down. Okay, all right. It's I always like to know this from a fundal, fundamental point of view, just to see what's happening around the world. Uh, our stock exchange, of course, is not immune. Where we are an island, but we're not an island financially. Uh, we are affected. A lot of our major companies are listed on multiple exchanges, so we we are influenced and affected by what happens in other markets. Um, at the moment. This to me feels like these kind of big candles and then just noise and big candles. It just feels like it's a, it's jolting down. Like a, you, you imagine if you fell off a cliff. There's a big cliff and there's like a, you, there's someone over here. You fall down and then you stop a little bit. Then you fall down again. You stop a little. Then you fall down again. That's this. That's what this chart is looking like. I don't have any reasons to trade it right now, but look again today, look at today's candle, it's just solid one-way traffic so far, I think the market ends in about, what, two minutes actually, uh, so, okay, this is a market I don't want to touch, if anything, if I had to trade it, I would definitely be a, be a seller, more, more interested in selling than than a buyer, but it's a market that I don't want to touch, but I just wanted to talk about it, just so that you can get a, a, a little bit of an understanding of what's happening overseas, and what this particular chart is looking like at the moment okay all right so that covers everything if anybody wants me to have a look at something different or ask any specific questions please type them in right now and I'll address them for you somebody previously asked me about the Aussie yen let's have a look at the Aussie yen here we go Okay, a lot of similarities to the to the Aussie US. Oh, we took a trade on Friday. Okay, I don't do a class on Friday. Did you take it? Uh, we had a. Can someone remind me what the what the setup was? Let me have a look at my history here. Got a GBP CAD trade on right now. That's from today's daily call. There's no no Aussie yen trade. Can someone just confirm? Euro 
pound did Friday's chart of the day give me one second let me just see if I can find that one second guys I don't actually no I don't have it I think that the ones that we took was a uh, was a a Swiss yen Let's see if I can move that oh I can't move that chart to my other screen there was a Swiss yen and there was a US Swiss okay um, what time frame was it it was a Swiss yen thank you Phoebe yeah it was a Swiss yen Okay, uh, but in any case, let's have a look at. In any case, let's have a look at what we have here. And if I did superimpose my fishing strip chart over here, so that we can all have a look, Let, let's have a look at it. See, there's no actual set. This is I'm on a daily, so I don't know what time frame. Let me look at a four hour. On a four hour, I can't. Oh, that was a, the earliest trade that I could see, but this would have been beyond what what is being said here. The first, this is the earliest one, and that would have been a, a good trade, but I don't. I think that's too far too far ago. That was earlier in January, so that wasn't it. Um, and if I look at a daily, sorry, a one hour chart. There could have been one here, and if you took that trade, uh, you would technically still be in this trade. Or maybe, look, if you if you go and look at the lessons on the fishing strip, you may have got out of the trade there for basically breaking even and no, and just got out of the trade. Okay. Um, okay. Any others that someone wants to have a look at? Anything else? All right, so this week, guys, it's going to be a, a Euro Pound daily fishing strip. Okay, let me have a look at that. So, Euro Pound. If you are taking trades based on other strategies, feel free to ask me. I'm more than happy to help you. Okay. This is a Euro Pound daily, but I don't actually have a setup here anywhere. This would have been the only setup that I can see, but that's like a long time ago. Is that the one that you're talking about, Dennis? This is not a setup over here. That's not a setup, so that so that would be incorrect. Okay, um, so there would be nothing on this particular chart. Okay, all right. Uh, back to my Aussie US chart. Okay, anybody have any other questions before we, we wrap up for this week? Now, remember, again, let me just show you, remind you what uh, our highlights in terms of news is. Um, these are the times, my local times, which is Australian Eastern Standard. Uh, remember, two central banks are making monetary policy statements. It's the Bank of Japan and uh, the uh, in Europe, uh, the ECB. Okay, uh, we've got the tense situations with Germany and also uh, the US, and these are geopolitical situations. So probably the Euro USD is going to be the one that's most volatile. But uh, if you trade the Euro Yen, that's also going to be very much data affected. All right, guys, if that's it, no more questions. We'll call it a day. We'll wrap up. Hope you'll have a fantastic trading week. Make sure that you watch the daily call every morning. And uh, if you do have any questions, feel free to get in contact with us. Other than that, have a great week. I'll talk to you tomorrow on the daily call. Bye for now.